welcome back. We're in lesson 22. We are going to talk about the review of numerical and algebraic expressions, statements and sentences, and conditional equations. All right, so here's where our algebraic thinking actually kicks in. I know we're supposed to review numerical and algebraic expressions, but that's going to take about two seconds. So this is a numerical expression. This is an algebraic expression. Note the differences. Numerical, all numbers. Algebraic has variables. That's it. There's our review. All done. Now let's move on to statements and sentences. So we can talk about math um, in a sentence. For instance, we could say the number of trust me that's an E. The number of peaches equals the number of apples. All right, so the number of peaches equals the number of apples. We can also write that in a number sentence or an expression. And what we'll do is we're going to use what's called a subscripted variable, which just means that we're using more than one letter to represent our variable because it makes sense when we look at it. So we're going to say the number of peaches equals the number of apples. How about that? The number of peaches equals the number of apples. So the number of peaches is NP. The number of apples is an A. And we have the equal sign right here. So the number of peaches equals the number of apples. That's really pretty easy. I mean, I can read that from this. And that's the whole point of these mathematical expressions is to shorten this into something that we can calculate, something that we can visualize into values. So we're going to take some more of these and see if we can figure out how to write them. So we have the number of peaches does not equal the number of actual apples. So the number of peaches does not equal the number of apples. Okay. How about the number of peaches is greater than the number of apples and the number of peaches is less than the number of apples. Those all make perfect sense if you know what you're seeing. If you know that this symbol means does not equal or isn't equal to, this is greater than and this is less than. Remember that the um, the open mouth of the V is the big side. That's the side that's greater. So when it's first, it's greater than. When the big side is to the right and the little side is first, it's less than. So big side first is greater, little side first is less. That's a, that's a pretty easy way to think about that. So when we have these statements where one side is equal to another or one side is not equal to another or one side is unequal to the other, then um, we call these equations because they have equality statements of some kind. And our job is to prove them true, to, f to solve them and find the true answer. That's what we're trying to do in an algebraic equation. So a conditional equation is an equation that is an algebraic expression statement consisting of two expressions connected by an equal sign. That's an equation. 
these are all equations, right? And the condition is that this one is equal, this one is not equal, this one is greater, this one's less than. So conditional equations. And most of the time, we just refer to these as equations. The condition is understood in whatever the sign that is in the equation. That is the condition. So here are some samples. Um, we have 4 equals 3 plus 1. Does 4 equal 3 plus 1? Yes, it does, because 3 plus 1 is 4. That one's correct. Um, so we have 4 plus x equals 2 plus 2 plus x. Is this one correct? Is this one true? Yes, because 2 plus 2 is 4, and 4 plus x would equal 4 plus x. So that one's, that one's good. What about this conditional equation? Is this condition being met? No, it's not. But if we cross that out, then it is true. But as it was, 4 does not equal 6, so it was not correct. What about this one? 4 plus x equals 6 plus x. Well, that can't be true because 4 and 6 are not equal, and x are representative of the same variable within this expression. So no, that's not true. So we have to mark that out, make that inequal in order to make it a true statement. What about this one? x plus 4 equals 8. We don't know. It might be true. Uh, equations are not always true equations as we see here. Two of these equations are true and two are false. Um, so these two are true and these two are false. false. And one of them, this last one, depends on the number that we use as a replacement for x. If we put the number 2 in here for x, it's not true. However, if we use the number 4, 4 plus 4 does equal 8, so then it would be true. So we would have to find the correct value of x in order to substitute it in to make this a true statement. And that's what we call solving for x, or, or solving an equation. We are looking for the unknown value that is the variable that makes the statement true. We want our math to be truth. Okay, that is the whole point. We want our math to be truth. Um, so we solve to find that truth. What is x? So let me show you how we solve an equation in case you've forgotten from last year. If you have not written all of this down, pause, do so, I'm going to clear the page. So here is how we would solve an equation. We had x plus 4, and it was set as equal to 8. Well, we could guess. Like we could take guesses at what x is. We could say, well, oh, x, x is probably 4 because I know 4 plus 4 is 8. Well, you would probably be right. In fact, you would be right. But there is a way to test it to find out. And the thing to remember in testing is that whatever you do on one side, because this is an equation, it has to balance. And so to keep the equation true on both sides and to keep it in balance, the golden rule for equations is whatever we do to one side of an equation we must do to the other. to keep it true. And what we're looking for in algebra is truth. And it should be to keep it true, not to keep it truth. 
we are looking for the, it to be true. That's the most important thing. So whatever we did to one side, we must do to the other to keep it true. So we want to get rid of this positive 4 to try to figure out what x is all by itself. So in order to do that, we're going to subtract 4 from this side. Well, if we subtract 4 from this side, then we have to subtract 4 from this side to keep them balanced. So these two are going to cancel out because the positive 4 and its opposite, negative 4, always equals 0. We know that. So now all we have left on this side is x. And if, and if we solve this, positive 8 and negative 4, it's going to be a positive 4. So we just found the value for x that makes this statement true. So now we can substitute it in to check our work and make sure that we got it correct. So we're going to take this value for x and put it into this original problem. We're going to say 4, which was the x value, plus the original 4 equals 8. Does 4 plus 4 equal 8? Yes. So we know that x does equal 4. We checked our work. That's something that I urge you to do. You don't always have to check your work. In fact, it's probably not a good idea to check your work on your homework um, if you're doing it. But if you'll do it on a piece of scratch paper to the side, or um, especially on a test, find the answer, check the answer, and then make sure you wrote down the right thing. If it's wrong, erase and start over. But anyway, this is the golden rule. You have to do this. I would write this down. Whatever we do to one side of an equation, we must do the, to the other to keep it true. Otherwise, what's the point? So here's an example. Example 22.1. We have a, um, a problem here that says, does negative 2 or positive 5 satisfy this equation? And here's the equation x squared equals negative 5x minus 6. So the question is, is it negative 2 or is it positive 5? Which one solves for this? Well, let's try substitution. Negative 2 squared equals negative 5 times negative 2 minus 6. Negative 2 times negative 2 is 4. Negative 5 times negative 2 is going to be positive 10 minus 6. Yes, 10 minus 6 is 4, and then 10 is positive, so it's a positive 4. So yes, that measures out. So 2 is correct. Let's try 5. x squared equals negative 5x minus 6. Drop in our buckets. So that's going to be 5 squared equals negative 5 times 5 minus 6. Okay, 5 squared is 25. Negative 5 times 5 is 25. Negative 25 minus 6. Does that work out? No, because this equals a negative 31. So this is not, excuse me, this is not true. So 5 is not the answer. Negative 2 is what works. Right, let's try another one. Let's try example 22.2. .2. I'm going to clear the page. If you haven't written it down, again, pause and do so and then continue. So 22.2, .2. our problem asks, is negative 2 or positive 5 the root for this equation? And the root just means the number that we're substituting for our variable, and in this case the variable is x. So the problem is x squared minus 3x equals 10. So let's start with subbing in negative 2. So for negative 2, I'm just going to put this over here. This is what we're trying over here. Um, negative 2 squared minus 3 times negative 2 equals 10. And let's do 5 over here. So we have 5 squared minus 3 times 5 equals 10. All right, here we go. Uh, negative 2 times negative 2 is going to be 4 positive. And then we have, put your minus sign there just in case, we don't know what it's going to be. We have negative 3 times a negative 2 that's going to be a positive 6, so we'll change it to positive 
6. Does that equal 10? Yes, so 2 is correct. So let's try 5. 5 times 5 is 25. And negative 3 times 5, that's a negative 15. Does 25 minus 15 equal 10? Yes, it does. So both of these are correct. And if that's the situation, you would type your answer into Jupiter as negative 2, comma, space, number 5. Okay? All right, that's all we have for Lesson 22. I will see you in Lesson 23.